Hey everyone, before I start today's video, I want to take a moment to give you all a massive thank you for the overwhelming positivity and viewership of my last video and for bringing my channel to 100 subscribers. I'm incredibly grateful that you guys appreciate my content and hope that I'm able to continue making videos that you all enjoy watching, whether that's for Destiny or other games. Now, on to the content. Destiny 2's Into the Light update has some of the best weapons I've ever seen in my time playing. This begs the question, what perks do I want on what guns, as well as why and should I enhance these? I'll be doing my best to answer all of these questions in this video. Before starting, it's important to note that this is just a PvE wishlist. I'm not really qualified to give a definitive best PvP weapons wishlist, so PvE only it is. Also worth noting is that guns have situations in which they are better or worse suited, and that applies to perks too to a degree, so I'll do my best to explain why I picked the perks that I did. If at any point you want to read the slides I have, feel free to pause, though the slideshow itself will be linked in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, you don't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. Although your viewership is appreciated and you might find that me explaining my reasoning makes my picks make more sense. Uh, yeah, timestamps for each weapon will be below. That's all I have to start, so let's get into the first weapon. First weapon that we're going to talk about is Forbearance. Forbearance is a waveframe grenade launcher that originally came from the Valve the Disciple raid and is still popular today because of its strong ad clear potential thanks to chain reaction. Waveframe grenade launchers in general are really only used for ad clear, so besides the perks themselves, the only thing to bother with is making sure you have a good reload speed stat and maybe handling too. So for me, I already have a forbearance that I like from the actual raid. Why should I get a new one? And maybe this question applies to you too. Well, the new one, along with all the brave weapons, has the indomitability origin trait on it for starters, which grants grenade energy for light up subclasses and melee energy for dark subclasses on kills. It's not a whole lot, but if health is less of a concern, it's a pretty good benefit. Additionally, and this is the big one, it has Demolitionist as a perk in the left column. So that on top of the origin trait means a lot of ability energy gains on kills, making this actually a genuinely worthwhile weapon to chase, despite me having the already original Forbearance. As far as the rest of the perks, you can use Unrelenting if you really want the health benefit, though if that's a big concern for you, I really recommend getting the version of Forbearance that comes from the raid. Chain Reaction is great for low and I think mid-level content, but especially since it's seeing a nerf on special grenade launchers in Final Shape, I think One for All actually makes for a strong replacement perk because it's easy to activate if you're hitting groups of enemies, and it provides a strong damage bonus. Finally, I want to take a moment to talk about something that I think is incredibly important, which is trait enhancing, and I'll be going over this for all of the weapons. Because in the Final Shape expansion when that launches, you'll be able to retroactively enhance traits for all these weapons, I think it's important to know ahead of time which ones are actually going to be worth spending your currency on. Of course, if you just have tons of it to spend anyway, and you like making the weapon border shiny, you can pretty much ignore this part unless you just like information. For Forbearance, the trait worth enhancing the most is Chain Reaction, and Demolitionist as a close second. Chain Reaction's benefit is the most noticeable since it provides extra reserve ammunition, and while the extra grenade energy from Enhanced Demolitionist is a benefit, it's pretty marginal, but then again, so is the grenade energy from the Origin trait, so I guess there's something to be said for Enhancing Demolitionist too. That's all I have to say for Forbearance. It's a good weapon, and especially if you don't already have it, it's super worth getting. Weapon number two is Succession, an aggressive sniper rifle that I've used the same role of since Deepstone Crypt came out to pretty much the same effectiveness throughout the last three or so years. Now, unfortunately, I can't speak to whether Indomitability is better than the Deepstone Crypt origin perk, because, fun fact, I never crafted Deepstone Crypt weapons, but I can definitely say the perks you want are pretty much the same, so if you already have Succession, then you probably don't need to bother with this new one, and if you don't, then I can confidently say this is the best utility sniper you can get your hands on for PvE, but not the best boss DPS sniper. If you don't have any boss DPS sniper, like at all, though, then this will be more than acceptable to start with. For those unfamiliar with Succession, the reason its popularity started is because when Deepstone Crypt launched, that raid's weapons were the only ones with the reconstruction perk, 
a very powerful weapon trait that slowly refills the magazine over time and can even fill it to double capacity. So for a sniper that you're only using against the occasional like champion or something, it's absolutely perfect and no other left column trait even comes close. The right column trait that you want depends on your situation or your playstyle, but generally I'd say recombination and vorp weapon are the most desirable and widely applicable. My current succession from the year of our lord 2020 has Vorpa Weapon, which is awesome, but if you like the idea of a high damage shot to really chunk mini bosses and you're getting plenty of kills with other weapons, Recombination is also excellent. The final two perks are for the people who need a boss DPS sniper, with Firing Line being great for raids and dungeons when you're with a full team, and Focused Fury being good for when you're playing solo. Finally, for enhanced traits, the two standout ones are Reconstruction and recombination, with both perks gaining noticeable upgrades from being enhanced that genuinely help in active gameplay. As always, pause if you need to read more. This weapon is one a decent amount of recent players should be familiar with, the Falling Guillotine Sword. Swords in general are really only good against certain bosses, but in those scenarios they far outshine other heavy weapon options. Falling Guillotine will very well be the best sword in terms of perks when it comes out due to being able to have double damage perks, which is something we've never really seen on any legendary sword before, to my understanding. So while you can go with something like Relentless Strikes and Bait and Switch to try and conserve ammo, my recommendation is actually to try and get a double damage perks roll, whether that's with Vorpal Weapon or Frenzy. And honestly, it could very well be worth having a roll of either on hand, depending on the situation. Uh, but that being said, if ammo did become a problem, Relentless Strikes is definitely worth using. It's just not really what's going to distinguish Falling Guillotine from the rest of the current selection of legendary swords out there. Then for enhanced perks, you really only need to bother with enhancing Bait and Switch or Surrounded, depending on your role. Next up is an absolute hype monster, especially for players who enjoy Void Builds. The Recluse will not only be coming back with much better perks than previously, but also different options for stats, meaning you can improve its reload speed, which is probably the most important stats for SMGs in PvE. It's honestly the most important stat on a lot of weapons in PvE, as you'll see as we keep going. For Recluse, I've tried to account for roles that you could take advantage of both with and without a Void build. My personal favorite non-build perk is Frenzy, since it's just universally helpful, and the best pairing with it is definitely Subsistence. That being said, Surrounded can be an okay option if you're really playing close quarters, and Destabilizing Rounds also puts in work, even if you're not running a purposeful build. Just don't use Threat Detector and Frenzy together, as the stat boosts from Threat Detector become redundant once Frenzy activates. Something else I thought I'd bring up was the potential pairing of Threat Detector and Target Lock for ramping up damage against somewhat beefier enemies. I don't really have much experience with Target Lock SMGs in PvE, but if you do and this is a good combination, give a shout in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. I'm personally not going to be looking too hard into this one unless I start hearing a lot of praise for it. I don't know that I've ever really heard praise for Target Lock SMGs in PvE. So, yeah. Just thought I'd put this up here. And then these combinations are best suited for void builds, especially those on Hunter and Titan. I should point out though that if you're getting consistent volatile rounds activations without destabilizing rounds, whether that's from an artifact perk or a fragment, it's worth picking Frenzy instead for the damage increase. And there's not many perks on Recluse worth enhancing. Surrounded if you're using it is very much worthwhile though, and at least on paper, target lock is also if you're using that for whatever reason. As always, feel free to pause and read. The Void perks are a bit more worth enhancing overall, with Destabilizing Rounds being a must, and Repulsor Brace being maybe not completely needed, but still probably helpful. And now we have Mountaintop, which has somehow returned with the most surprising twist possible. It has Physics Impulse, aka the ability to rocket jump. I unfortunately can't really speak to the best perks to maximize its rocket jumping potential, we just don't have enough information right now, so I'll be sticking to perks to maximize its combat potential. 
The combat-based mountain top has a number of strong combinations, so you kind of have to decide what best suits your playstyle. The right column perk you want depends on the general situation you're using it for, whether that's to add clear or to kill things like champions. And the left column perk is kind of a supplement to that. So for example, a good ad killing mountaintop would be Ambitious Assassin and One for All. But if you wanted extra grenade energy too, you could choose Demolitionist instead of Ambitious Assassin. And if you're mostly using mountaintop against bigger, beefier targets, then Vorpal Weapon is your best friend. And Lead from Gold might be the best pairing there, since it'll help keep your ammo stocks up. Now all that being said, I do have to mention Auto-Loading Holster because it tends to be a pretty popular pick on these single-shot grenade launchers. If this is what suits your playstyle, go right ahead. Be sure to enhance this one in final shape because Enhanced Auto-Loading Holster reloads the gun faster while it's stowed. Very much worthwhile. As for the other perks, Lead from Gold is probably the best enhanced perk on here with One for All and Ambitious Assassin being acceptable close seconds. Hammerhead's return is actually being met with stiff competition from existing machine guns, but that doesn't mean the new one isn't coming out kicking. New Hammerhead can have double damage perks, which, much like Falling Guillotine, puts it a ways ahead of the existing options in terms of lethality. For ad clear, killing tally is easily best in the right column, and while Rampage is universally good too, destabilizing rounds is also worth using for the area of effect damage potential. Pick your poison. If you don't have a machine gun like Retrofit Escapade already, 4th times the charm and target lock puts in work against higher health targets and is pretty ammo efficient, especially with how stable 450 machine guns are in general. In fact, Hammerhead is going to be good because it's like a super ammo efficient ad killing option compared to a lot of the other machine guns out there. Overall, I would say the perks on this gun are pretty well worth enhancing, minus 4th times the charm. So if you like this weapon and you're using these perks here, your hammerhead will only be getting better as time goes on. Blast Furnace is next. Uh, absolute classic from Black Armory. Honorable mention to Kindled Orchid. Hopefully we see that one in the future. Pulse Rifles and PvE. Right now, they're just kind of okay usually. I personally only use them when they're needed for champion stuns and nightfalls. But if they're for you, or you just really like Blast Furnace, I can understand completely. Funny enough, Blast Furnace kind of blows a lot of current PvE pulse rifle options out of the water with double damage perks, and really strong ones too. Frenzy, as always, is a must-have, and while Kinetic Tremors, I would say, has a higher ceiling, Firefly is a fun perk also, so if you like that, you're not really throwing. But that being said, this isn't a weapon you should just be jumping up and down to enhance with these traits. Uh, as a final note, I'm just going to go off topic and say that I really like these Brave Weapon ornaments, like, a lot. They look like they just came out of the forge, still hot. I'm all about it, personally. Getting back on track, though. Next, we have arguably the most important weapon to be going after, Edge Transit. Yeah, that's, that's a weird sentence to be saying. But what Bungie's done with Edge Transit is insane, as we'll see in the perks list. Important thing to note, though, is that you want as big of a magazine as you can get your hands on. Boom. See these perks? This is how you make a meta. And in fact, Edge Transit actually presents a special case in which you really want the double perks version of the gun for maximum effectiveness. The way you'd want to use Edge Transit is to overflow the magazine with Envious Assassin as much as possible. That's step one. Then when it's time for boss damage, you switch the perk to Cascade Point, which theoretically slash hopefully keeps your magazine overfilled. Now what you do is you activate Cascade Point and also Bait and Switch. And suddenly you have a fast firing grenade launcher with a 30% buff to damage. And the best part is, once Cascade Point runs out, you just reactivate that and bait and switch, and you do the same thing again. And by the second time you've used up your Cascade Point, your magazine should be either empty or close to empty, but those shots come out so fast that you likely have time to dish out even more damage before whatever boss you're fighting goes immune again, at which point you just switch back to Envious Assassin, 
overfill the magazine, repeat the cycle again. So this is all just theory for now, but assuming it holds up, this absolutely demolishes the competition with other heavy grenade launchers in terms of boss DPS. And if that's all like too much work for you and you just need something reliable, then you get Envious Assassin and Bait and Switch and you'll be completely fine. For enhanced perks, Envious Assassin Enhanced is basically required nowadays for its maximum benefit. And Bait and Switch is more just helpful, although it and Cascade Point would need some testing after the weapon after the weapon's out to kind of give a firm answer on whether you should enhance those like together or at all. It's a deep topic. Unfortunately, the rest of the weapons won't have nearly the amount of hype behind them as Edge Transit, so while I will go over them, it might seem like I'm less excited, so apologies if something you're excited for seems to just get glossed over. In any case, here's Luna's How. Immediately, you will notice that I am not mentioning Magnificent How as a perk, and that is because we just don't have numbers for its damage bonus as of right now. If it ends up good, I would pair it with Enlightened Action in the left column. That's just me personally, but currently there's just not enough information out there to make a solid call on that. These two perk op options combinations that I've listed here, these seem to be the most solid on paper to me, since they're all traits that we have information about. For solar builds, Heal Clip and Incandescent work very, very well together. And if you're not sure why, I highly recommend watching Astacross's review of Heliocentric QSC. I'll link that in the video description. The second combination of Enlightened Action and Precision Instrument seem to pair well to me for something like a Nightfall in which enemies have higher health and you might be using a hand cannon to deal with champions. Enhanced perks on Luna's health seem good pretty much besides Heal Clip, so enhance away. To me, though, Midnight Coup seems like the PvE hand cannon that would perform better in most scenarios due to its traits. If you, like me, have used a lot of Freightbringer, looking at the perks will immediately show you why I would give Midnight Coup such high praise out of the gate. Explosive Payload in either Frenzy or Kinetic Tremors is simply outstanding in terms of damage. And remember, this comes with an origin trait that gives ability energy on kill which makes this even more appealing. Personally, once I have a roll of Midnight Coup, my Adept Fatebringer will most likely end up on the shelf. RIP. Out of everything shown here, Explosive Payload and Kinetic Tremors are perks that are worth enhancing the most, so if you like AoE damage, get on that. And here we have the weapon with probably the least amount of community hype behind it, that being Hung Jury. Now Hung Jury and most, if not all, other PvE legendary scouts aren't really being used right now because the use cases for them are just few and far between. But as with the other weapons in this list, Hung Jury does have super strong perks that put it ahead of other scout rifles and make it maybe somewhat worth getting for the, you know, for the fourth time. Double damage perks again. Who would who would have guessed? I would go for the same role as Midnight Coup, that being Kinetic Tremors and Explosive Payload, but Firefly and Precision Instrument are definitely more than passable alternatives to Explosive Payload. And Hung Jury's Enhanced Perks are some of the best of the bunch too, which puts it even further ahead of its already limited competition. Last but not least, especially in PvP, I'm just calling it, we have Elsie's Rifle, slash the Stranger's Rifle. Back for the 10th time, this Pulse Rifle for PvE might not be as good on its own compared to Blast Furnace, but it does have a nice surprise. And that surprise is Destabilizing Rounds. This weapon's perk combinations are probably the weirdest looking ones on this list, at least to me, but they do all have uses. Under Over is actually great for dealing with enemy shields, Repulsor Brace is good if you want to lead into Void more, and even Loose Change of All Things is helpful. If you're more traditional like me, you might just want to slap Frenzy on it though and call it a day. And that's totally fine. Enhanced Under Over, should you be using that perk, should be worth your while, and so is Destabilizing Rounds. And maybe, maybe Repulsor Brace also. 
And that's all the weapons. Of legendary rarity. Yeah. Maybe a good thing I waited a little bit before putting this out. Because now I can talk about the returning craftable exotics too. And what perks you want on those. First up is Whisper of the Worm. This heavy sniper's goal is to just keep shooting for as long as possible. As missing just one critical shot is incredibly unforgiving. So for stats, you want handling to make aiming down sights faster, and you want stability to reduce just a little more flinch if possible. That brings us to magazines, and I believe flared magwell is the way to go, since it will speed up the reload speed significantly in the case that you do indeed miss your shot. Now perks. As crazy as it might sound, I think no distractions is the play. Because it gives flinch reduction and so it will allow for the most consistent shooting experience it was mentioned that whisper of the worm is receiving a reserve ammo buff in into the light so field prep ends up becoming kind of redundant in my opinion if that's not enough to convince you then a while back bungie gave whisper the new property of pulling one shot of ammo from thin air each time you land its three consecutive shots you know all crits in a magazine meaning it's just more ammo efficient in general these days all that being said though whisper's biggest strength is sustained dps not short period dps so unless it sees a buff don't get too excited for a whisper meta even with this new crafted version and now truly finally finally is outbreak perfected the caretaker slayer itself returns in an even better form than before as you can now increase its magazine size for the most tangible gameplay benefit and as for perks i am team rapid hit because while rewind rounds is good so once you have to reload you have to reload and outbreak doesn't reload too quickly whereas rapid hit instead of having a slow reload after a while with rewind rounds you have to reload more often, but you reload quickly, so there's less downtime. But it's not to say that Rapid Hit is universally better. If you're running in a group with a Luna Factions Warlock or a Titan with Rally Barricade, which I hope they're running Rally Barricade in PvE, Rewind Rounds will very much outshine Rapid Hit. In fact, if you're that kind of player, you might want to craft two Outbreaks for that very reason, though I imagine that's not everyone's first choice, so I completely understand. And, okay, now we're actually done. No more weapons to discuss. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any thoughts, questions, or points to bring up, please comment them down below. I enjoy seeing what you guys have to say. Okay, bye.